utility costs here. The optimization, the title of the talk is Optimization of Power Cost Forecasting. The team members are Sharon Brown, Ron Lee, Lee Han, and Matt Tran. Okay, good uh, afternoon, evening. Thank you everyone for staying till the last presentation. Um, our title is Optimization of Power Cost Forecasting. And as he already mentioned, myself, Sharon Brown, and Lee, who is the project manager, Ni Fan, and Nat Tran. Uh, we were sponsored by the Snohomish Public uh, Utility District. And our industrial advisor is Mr. John Martinson, who could not be here today. And our faculty advisor is Dr. Wayne Kimura. So our outline for this evening, um, we're going to um, introduce the project and our goal, the background, approach to solve the project, our results, the problems we encounter, the reflections, summary, and acknowledgments. So before I jump into this slide, I just want to say that all power utility uh, companies use uh, some kind of software to use um, on their daily tasks. In this case, uh, the Snohomish uh, PUD asked us to work with Power World. It's one of the softwares uh, used in the industry today. So, this software uh, simulates, uh, I'm sorry, product, commercial software product for power utilities, as I mentioned before. Uh, it simulates high voltage power system operations at specific instances of time and it's uh, capable of solving power systems of up to 250,000 buses and forecast costs of power generation and consumption. So why is this Nohomish PUD interested? They're interested because it wasn't clear that Power World is calculating the true minimum lowest cost. So they asked us to um, validate Power World accuracy and so that would determine the lowest cost of a balanced power grid and in turn uh, if there is a big difference it could potentially be uh, um, referred to lowering the customers uh, bills and costs. So our project goal we had to create an algorithm to maximize the power flow with the minimum price. Um, we all have to be done with a balanced system, which means no overloaded lines, transmission lines. Um, so we validated a simple power system using the mathematical approach that um, later they're going to talk about. So a little bit of background of the U.S. electrical grid, uh, as most of you know. Um, it is. It has three major in interconnections uh, covering the U.S., but uh, we also have a separate uh, interconnection up here in Quebec, Canada, which is um, related to the U.S. Um, it was started by Tesla in Niagara Falls, and um, more recent data in 2010, 4,125 terawatts was generated in the United States. So this slide, um, my classmate to me is going to take over. Thank you. Thank you, Shana. So in this slide, you show how power is distributed in the uh, real world. So first, power is generated in generating station. And then after that, power goes through step up transformer. The purpose of step up transformer is to bring the voltage to a higher level so that it compensates for the loss due to transmission line resistance. After that, the power goes through transmission line and again go to step down transformer so that the voltage is bring down again and it can be used by the customers. We got the software power world and we also just learned how the power is distributed in real life. So our world Power World simulate this. Well, there, there are two options in Power World, Optimal Power Flow, OPF, and Economic Dispatch, ED. The different difference between these two optimizations is that OPF allows us to maximize the 
less expensive cost a power generator to buy let it run at 100% capacity. That may also reduce the amount of power generated from the more expensive generator. Also, the Rejobo provide enough power for all the low income missile life. And it's actually missing one point is that it provide it will not provide any overload transmission line. And in economic dispatch, it will reduce the cost of the whole system to the lowest, regardless of the network condition. That means after running ED, we would expect many overload in transmission line. And overload just basically means uh, the transmission line is carried more than 100% of its capacity. The the main challenge that we have for this project is that we have to determine how to minimize the total cost of the system while avoiding any overload condition. And in order to do that, we we'll have to divide the big network into smaller area and start analyzing each of the smaller area. We identify where the least expensive generator are located, and then we identify what transmission line are connected to that generator. Will then maximize that generator depend on the transmission line limit. Then we repeat this process for other sections in that area. To start understand power world and to also validate part of power world, we could create a very simple case here, which has five bus. The bus is named by one, uh, two, three, four, five, and then two generator. One of them is a slap bus. Slap bus, each of the mathematical term is, uh, is like a reference gener generator in, in the whole network. And it doesn't really exist in real life. And then we have transmission line. With a meter on the transmission line, we, we represent how much power being distributed in that, uh, being carried in that transmission line. And we have the transformer symbol. The square, red square, represent the circuit breaker, and this is the, the only load that we have in this uh, network. And what we did was we validate the bus admin matrix, and then confirm that with the bus admin matrix in our world. In order to find the bus voltage and current, we have to use uh, iteration. And this is a knowledge that we learned from one of our tasks, uh, power and an analysis. The equation that we will be used is y equals to y bus times e. Y stands for ejected current, which is the difference between the current provided by the generator and the current consumed by the load. This whole matrix is the y bus, and uh, this matrix is the bus voltage. So that in this y bus, we have two types of uh, elements: the diagonal element, this, and the non-diagonal element. And in order to find the admin of the diagonal element, we sum up all the admins that connect to that bus. And to find the non-diagonal element, we calculate the admins between that connect between one bus to another, and we take the negative of that number. And here's our result after doing that. And we confirm with our world, and they are equals to each other. Next up, my friend and friend will talk about the base thing. Hi everyone, my name is Yochen and I will talk about the base case. This is the case we received from uh, so what we speak today. There are five main components in the system. The first component is gener generator. It creates electric power. For example, example for the generator uh, is uh, our so what, so what we speak today. Seattle system line and another electricity companies. The same uh, in um, there are total eight generator in the system. A small scope here generator. You see that. The second component in generator supply which generate edge power, edge power from one component to another to one component, one component to another component. The third component is load. It consumes energy power. This component represents our houses, and we have 
total safe load in the system. The error we get is load, load, yeah, we get sick of that. The next component is bus where generator gives us a light load connect together. This component is distributed by giving us a light from one from one location to another another location in the system. The final component is transformer. It transforms voltage from one level from one level to another level. The green arrow on the GMS line shows the direction of the energy power flow and the percentage on the GMS line show how much power is delivered and we set up 90% maximum. The cost of each generator is different and this is the total cost of the whole system. I will go and try to minimize the total cost and keep the percentage of each generator at most 90%. To make work we use two options from power world. The first option is in the mode. In, in this mode, we set up the, uh, the price of our generator. Its color represents its generator. Then we address the cost from the cheapest one to the most expensive one. We, the color over here, the from the generator 5 is not in order because when we open the generator 5 there are three levels it's three levels of the cost to use and this is the first level and this is the second level the first level cost 12 bucks and the second level cost 11 bucks to, uh, we need to use all of the first level in order to go on, go on to the second level so that's why over here is not in the order. We add all of the bright together and plus 200 bucks fuel cost from bus 5 and 9 we had a total cost over here. It's hard to see. And our total cost is as same as the total cost from power water in the ED mode. This ED mode gives us the lowest cost bus there are some uh, there are some overload James the light up here. The, in the diagram, you can see the red lights of here is overload. And this does not satisfy the requirement in the beginning. So we don't use the heat mode for solve our problem. We change to the second mode, that's the uh, OPF mode. In this mode, we divide the system into three small areas. This first area, second area, and the third area. In the first area, include one, uh, generator one, five, and seven. Based on our prices, generator five and one is the cheap one. So we want to maximize the the power, the energy power from this generator and the 70 is the defensive one so we want to minimize the energy power from this generator. We use the same method for area 2 and 3. Next, my Andy Lee will talk about our, our reader and the result. So, in order to find the optimal cost of the whole system, First, we have to identify the smaller area in the for the system. Like we have to identify the sub part of the whole um, system. And um, next, we have to identify which of the generator is the lowest one for that particular area in the system. And then we have to also look at the trans uh, transmission line, which is co connected to the buses at that system. We only allow 90% of the total capacity of power that go through the uh, transmission line in order to keep the whole system going. Also, we have to make sure all of the power receiving bus is less expensive than the sending bus and have to disconnect 
out of the parallel flow from one bus to another bus. If we see, uh, if we don't, if we don't want to um, use all of them like overextensive the whole system. Also, maximize the capacity of the transmission line from the cheap bus to more expensive buses, depending on how much the power is needed. So, if there is like um, another low at that transmission line, and you don't want to use the more expensive generator at that bus, you have, you can transfer um, the power from another bus to that particular bus and then go into the load. And re we repeat the same algorithm for other way every as well. So speaking of the result that we got, um, if you look carefully at the first slide, uh, at the first slide, this is when we use the um, Optimal power flow, then we got $69,756 per hour. And this is the AD, which is we're not going to use because it's all of the transmission lines uh, over the limit. So using our, our algorithm, we have $64,323.4 per hour. Um, in order to get that result, first we have to look at this area right here. This is when we divide it the whole system in three smaller area. The first area consists of three buses, bus number one, five, and seven, and three generators at each of them. Um, we have to look at what, what transmission line is connected to which of the buses. Therefore, we can calculate how much of the power is going to be needed for that bus. For example, there's two transmission lines connected to bus one. Each of them consists of one, uh, 500 megawatt capacity, 90% of them is 450. Total is, can contain 900 megawatt from bus one to bus two. The reason that we cut this transmission line from bus one to bus five is because when we look at the uh, power flow from bus one to bus five, there is the power cost is more expensive than the one at bus one. So therefore, we don't want that to happen. It's going to cost more if we do that. That's why we cut, cut it that line. Also, uh, we, don't, we don't want the power at bus 5 is transferred to bus 1 because we're going to need it all of the power for, of the transmission of the generator for both of them because they are the lowest, cheapest generator of the whole system. And we want to maximize this usage. So, um, two create 900 megawatt power when let the, trend, uh, the generator at bus one create 900 megawatt and allowing the generator at bus one, at uh, bus five to create 1,000 megawatt, which, is, which support the 250 megawatts of load. Two transmission lines each carry 450 max, but since we already connected one loaded to bus five, they're not gonna be enough power to go to each of the transmission lines. So there's going to be less power going to each of them. And therefore, the, even though the more expensive gener generator at bus 7, we still have to use that a little bit to compensate for all of the um, uh, power that's not going to carry enough to, uh, from bus 1 to bus 7, from, from bus 5 to bus 7. And therefore, we have 90% connected from bus 7 to bus 4 to support the load at another area of the system. So the total that we got is with total saving $5,432 uh, per hour. So to overview the result that we got, so we have maximized the power generation from less expensive generator in each subsection. We might minimize the power generation from expensive generators and shut off all of the transmission line between um, from bus 4 to bus 9 and from bus 1 to bus 5. And overall, there's no overloaded, or overloaded transmission lines. Um, as, as the reflection of the, um, ha, uh, the, whole, of the whole project, first we have um, to get familiar with the system, like our Industrial advisor already told us at the beginning we have to understand what and get familiar with the power in order to finish this project. Also, we have a difficult time like 
figure out like is it like a software related to, or with, whether we have to create a software in order to run the problem or we're just gonna create an algorithm to for the software to run. <clears throat> then we from this project we also learn a lot about distribution as well as like power generation, how we can uh, simulate a software and tell us and predict how much cost it's gonna uh, for the for the company how much co how much they have to put in to create that much power. We also have gained a lot of experience as a power engineer for the future career. Another thing that I want to mention about the result is this, even though it's give the cheaper um, cheaper cost when using our algorithm. One of the things is when we disconnect all of the transmission line, that is going to affect the area which are connected to the best transmission line. There's going to be loss of power of, of those area because this is only a small part area. Think of it like um, other system that connected to this whole system. It's when we cut one of them, that's not going to be it's going to lose power somewhere else. So that is the, the contingency of the project. So to summarize the power world, it is a great tool that is used in the power industry. Um, it finds the correct minimum value of power world and the cost. It's also perform a realistic simulation uh, of, the, of, the, of the whole power system. Next is, and lastly, we would like to thank our um, advisor, uh, Dr. Wen Kimura, for letting us and helping us explaining things and letting us throughout this project. And um, our faculty advisor, John Wilkinson, for helping us work on this problem. And Frankie Lu was also very helpful for um, helping us answer some questions. And uh, Professor Arnold Burgess for allowing us to work on this project with Snowpad. And uh, Professor Gofine Mahmoud to help, him, to help us uh, solve some of the problems that we encounter while working on this project. And thank you for everyone for participation. <laughs> I have a few questions. Uh, first of all, for the design, did you did they give provide you the design to work to work for? When they give you the software, did they say we want you to calculate for that design, or did you come up with some design to to um, to assure that it's actually it is correct? Whatever well, value is um, given. So they actually give us a big uh, system, and then before we start working on that big system, we have to create our own small system to validate all of these software is it working correctly or not. That's, that's when uh, we apply all the medical problems in, in it to solve it. And then we move on to the bigger system where we try to minimize the cost and maximize the power flow of all the generator. And that, that was a real system that they had. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, awesome. and, and the second thing is, is the price. Uh, the price that you come up with, you said it's less. Which one was less? The way, the way how you calculated manually or the, the software? Uh, the, when we calculate it on the paper, we actually put our algorithm in the software. Mm -hmm. And then it's kind of oh, exactly the same thing that, as we calculated. I understand. And, and the when last one is... When you minimized it, when you minimized it, they actually overwrote the software. I understand. I, I, thought, I, I misunderstood. Then I thought you were doing manually, but you worked with the software together. So here's uh, my last question is, um, was able to, the software was able to detect any faults? Uh, yes, this software not only used to forecasting the cost, but it's it also very good for uh, fault analysis. So uh, we use that, if we can just right click on any bus on any transmission line and then to choose fault, and then we'll be able to give the current and the voltage to report, and then uh, based on that, the company can build the, the protection device uh, in case that fault happens. Thank you. I think what they found, a couple of teachers, 
is that uh, although they could minimize the cost and, and beat what was power was predicting, they cut, they cut two transmission lines to do that, which realistically you can't really do. You don't want to do that. That's what I'm saying. You'll probably cut off somebody else's power you know, in the process. Yeah. So all this is is that Power World is probably doing a good job. Uh, you could do better, but not realistically. Yeah, our, excuse me, our number was lower mathematically, but in real life, it's connected within the larger grid. So it's important to maintain the grid, um, the, for the grid to be reliable. So economic reasons go out the window. Um, I'm curious. Uh, so you minimizing cost, right? Yeah. You did it uh, manually, you said? Manually and then we plug okay, it How do you do it manually? I mean, it's, you have this cost that you're going to minimize, and you have these constraints. So what type of method do you use to do this? Oh, so uh, first we, uh, in order to force the transmission line to always stop at 90% limit, we, we go through a few steps in our world and then uh, set the limit. And then we just manually set, after we know that what area we analyze, we just manually go into each generator and then manually adjust the power that will produced from my that generator. And then we'll just click on solve in our world and then we'll calculate the price after we manually change them. Yeah, for each of the generator in the system, there's a uh, piecewise linear cost for each generator. So it's going to tell you how much from like 100 to 200 megawatt it generated, and then how much from 200 to 400 megawatt it generated. It'll tell you like exactly how much, and we can calculate by hand, and then Using the software, you just hit the button and then it's running. If you, if you want a certain limit of power to be generated at that. Yeah, I, I, I understand the software. This is a load flow program and then it yeah. has cost right. aspect. But the minimization, the optimization is how I'm wondering, is like is a trial and error a little bit there or are you using some algorithm or something to oh, come up with the minimum cost? Yeah, we, we we use OPF result and based on that we we have we, put, we run that first and after that we we like modify that up, uh, algorithm to uh, get the lower cost. So actually we use OPF. OPM. So, OPF. Well, what do I it's a combination of using the software and using manual. They oh, did it iteratively. Okay. So OPM is within this power wall. OPF. OPF. OPF is OPM. OPM. Optimal power flow. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see. So that's the algorithm embedded in that. Yeah, well the logic that they use is pretty straightforward. Use the cheapest generators first. Maximize your usage. Right. And OPF kind of tries to do that too. And what they did is they tried to go beyond that, try to really maximize it. By diverting, in other words, what they were trying to explain is that you've got an expensive generator here, it's producing power to a cheaper generator. Well, why in the world do you want to do that for? <laughs> so cut that transmission line, that's why they cut it. Because it was just Taking expensive power going to a cheaper power that makes no sense. But OPM is not smart enough to know to do that. See, the yeah, software's not smart enough to be able to figure that out. And that's what they were trying to do to test out that. Uh, it's a very good ambitious project. This could be a thesis and more. So it's a good, very good. Uh, so when you cut the transmission line and you said that there's something between them that will lose that, you know, power. Yeah. So do you have to like relocate those, or what do you do with those? Um, so in our system, we don't know what other area is going to be connected to the system, so we not kind of worry about that. But since if it's in a real case, we're probably not going to cut the transmission line because it's due to reliability or economy. Right. So and even good. So uh, each uh, transmission line, each generator, they have a minimum downtime and minimum uptime. So meaning if we shut off it. We have to wait, uh, like, say, three hours before we can turn it on again. Or uh, when it on, we have to wait three hours to turn it on again. So this is only good for one hour. So uh, yeah, it's not realistic to turn off in real life. More questions? All right. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>